Hey, this is Pure, and today I'm going to share with you this guitar which I recently bought when I was uh, visiting Japan last week. So there's this uh, very popular street in Tokyo, uh, Ochanomizu, where you have around you know more than 10 music shops there, which sells both brand new and used uh, musical instruments. So this is what I got. So uh, you'll see that it is a Greco, which is one of those um, you know companies which um, created Les Paul clones in the starting from the 70s to the 80s to the 90s. So uh, this one, this particular model is an EGC 480. And so here it is. So it is a, you know, as you can see, a uh, Gibson um, Ebony uh, Les Paul, uh, you know, replica. Um, and so you might have heard about the lawsuit era, era where there was this time that uh, um, Japanese companies were creating Les Paul copies. And in the end, you know, they, they were allowed uh, to continue doing it because Gibson did not act you know, fast enough in terms of shutting it down. But um, what I'll be going through will be the different features of this guitar. So we can do that now. Let's start with the headstock. So you can see here that it has the Gibson open book headstock and it has the, the Greco logo and um, here's something interesting. Now, most Greco uh, guitars that you'll find would have that diamond, the split diamond logo. This is slightly different. So you'll see that it has what seems to me like a, uh, a flame, a torch logo that we have here. And you would have binding on the headstock. And that binding extends, you know, all the way throughout the body. So... Uh, double bound here for the body front and back and then uh, it has made in Japan tuners there at the back and uh, the serial number so it has a uh, the neck looks uh, great to me it is a bolt on so it's not a set neck uh, uh, Les Paul it is quite heavy. Uh, so I uh, used to have a couple of Les Pauls before, which I've uh, sold also. Uh, well, th this one, uh, again, I am not a fan anymore, uh, given my age in terms of having a very heavy guitar. But since I am mostly a bedroom musician and I play you know, while sitting down, it's not that big a deal. So what else do we have here? So, of course, uh, it's a Les Paul, so we've got uh, a pair of humbuckers. I haven't opened this up yet. Uh, I'm still waiting for uh, some new hardware to come in because I do intend to do a, a little bit of an upgrade here and there. So maybe when I do that, uh, that's when I'll see what these pickups really are. Uh, from what I know, I think Greco had their own um, in-house pickups. But we'll see uh, uh, if that is really the case. So as you can see, we've got gold hardware here. Now, one thing about the measurements of these things, it, it's made in Japan and they're following uh, metric measurements, right? While uh, the Gibson uh, USA would be doing uh, imperial you know, inches, right? Well, this one, uh, those made in Japan would have... Um, would be based on millimeters, right? So, so uh, when buying kind of upgrades, uh, that's something that I had to kind of specifically look for, that it would be something that would fit uh, a, a, made, a made in Japan guitar. Now, you can see here that for the most part, it still looks quite nice, although there are some dings here and there, some ding, ding here, and another one here and some minor scratches, but I'm fine with that because this guitar was made in 1990. So it, it 
it looks like it's something from uh, how many years ago now? Uh, 34 years ago, right? So I'm fine with it having uh, faded hardware um, and uh, some dings and minor scratches as long as those imperfections uh, don't affect in terms of uh, the, the neck joint in terms of having cracks or a any warping on the neck which I think it was it looks pretty straight to me so I, I'm good in terms of the, the condition now in terms of the the cost the the price for of this one is 65,000 yen now when you convert that to my local currency of Philippine pesos that would be um, only 26,000 pesos which is uh, I think a very good deal for me. I was quite happy to, to purchase it at that price. Okay. Now, I looked for uh, a guitar um, that was made in 1990 because that year is kind of a special year for me. Uh, you know, we've got the, we all have our milestones in our lives and I think that was a year where, you know, it was an, an inflection point in terms of the my direction in life in terms of you know uh, what happened during that year so 1990 is a special year for me and I, I wanted to have a guitar which is made in 1990 and so I, that's why I got this one okay. so as you can see some fading here at the back but I'm fine with that Actually, uh, my intention for this guitar is to have several people sign it autograph it and then uh, later on, put a, a uh, additional layer of gloss to preserve those signatures. So it's something uh, like a commemorative uh, guitar is really why I, uh, why I bought this guitar. So as you can see, black glass ball with nice ivory binding. Uh, so fretboard mother pearl in inlays, I think. And one of the things that you'll notice in Greco guitars, if you have an inlay on the first fret, that's supposed to be kind of the uh, higher, more premium type of guitar. So uh, that's supposedly one sign uh, for checking whether it's a, you know, maybe a, a custom type of guitar. Well, I'm not yet an expert on Greco, but that's what I've heard. So for um, a guitar which is this old, I'm quite happy with the condition given the price that I paid for it. Now let's try to do a quick demo in terms of the, the, the sound. Oh, before we do that, let, I was mentioning earlier that there were a few things that I want to, to maybe upgrade. One would be the, the knobs. So the, the knobs that it has would be your, what, what they call the, the witch hat knobs, right? Because as you can see in terms of the hat, it's like the, the hat of a witch. But as you can see here, only the, the volume knob for the, the neck pickups still has that, you know, that label that it is the volume knob. So I did order four knobs that I can... Uh, replace this with but of course I'll be keeping the originals um, and for these knobs you have to uh, to to buy the ones with uh, 18 splines in terms of instead of 24 so again that's for the metric knobs that's the one which will fit some of the the screws I'd like to replace with uh, gold screws so that it matches the the gold hardware now, supposedly, uh, comparing it with uh, Gibsons of the same era, uh, this should be gold. This should be gold. Well, the rest I can leave as, as black. I did open up the, the cavity here. Uh, it looks nicely wired to me. I think they upgraded the electronics. It's not the original one, but that's very common for Made in Japan guitars. Um, um, for vintage, older guitars, the, I've seen in the forums that they tend to be noisy and that would be one of the things that get replaced. But again, um, I haven't looked at markings and all that, but it did, does seem to me like uh, the, the, the pots have been uh, changed, which is I'm happy with because I would have done that uh, also anyway. 
Okay, so let's try to uh, play it a little bit. So I'm plugging this in to a... Where's the cord? I'm plugging this into a... Uh, as you can see here, this is a preamp. Um, and with a DI out. So it's like plugging it into um, a, an amp. Uh, no effects in between. I didn't even put in any you know, delay reverbs, just kind of a guitar being plugged in directly to the amp. So let me just quickly check, uh, check if I'm in tune. Yeah, good enough. The G, as usual, <laughs> for any Les Paul guitar <laughs> is always out of tune and so has to be uh, fixed a little bit. Okay, so let me see. Um, there we go. So first, let's try some clean tones. Now, in this um, Joyo preamp house, I'm choosing, of course, a Marshall. If you're playing a Les Paul, it has to be on no, a no Marshall, right? So a Marshall emulation. Let's start with the... This would be your clean channel. So let's do... Uh, kind of usually when you want to have some you know cleaner tones we're using the, the neck pickup so that's what I chose here yeah so the the sound seems you know full to me uh, again what what you can expect from uh, a Les Paul right Let's do some strumming. Yeah, some cowboy chords that we're doing here, GDC. Now uh, let's switch to the to the overdrive channel. And of course, when if you're doing uh, do, uh, using a Les Paul, we're going to go to the to the bridge. Is that too loud? Hmm, it sounds to me a bit fuzzy. It's like I have a fuzz in the in the signal, but I don't have one. If you're uh, listening to Paul, this would be the type of music you'll be playing on it, right? So that's how it sounds, uh, you know, the, the overdriven sound, again. There you have it, so that's the... That's the Greco EGC 480. So uh, the the store in the store they have their own I know uh, luthier who fixes all the guitars, and I think I am happy with the setup. So that's there we go. So that's the uh, kind of my very quick review, and more like just me sharing 
this new guitar which I got. Again, that's the Greco EGC 480, made in 990, uh, 1990, I mean. And it is really a, a good uh, clone of uh, Gibson during, during that time. Okay, thank you everyone for listening. See you again. <laughs>